Hello guys, welcome. This is going to be a two-part video, so I'm going to be first of all showing off my games that I have gotten this year and my top 10. I'm gonna go in order when did I get them, that's how it's gonna be. And anyways, then let's start it. Yeah, so here's my collection too, by the way. Starting off the list that I, the first game I got this year was this one, Horizon Zero Dawn. I got this on launch day from GameStop. Yeah, I reserved it. Next up is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I also got the Switch itself, so all together. Yeah, they were both reserved, so I got the gray Joy-Cons. Then I sold them and I got the Neon. Yeah, it also came out for the Wii U, by the way. Just saying. Cross-platform link with the uh, Twilight Princess. After that, I got one to Switch. I got this so I can play with my friends, and that was like the only, only, at least if good, multiplayer. There was also Super Bomberman R, but you get what I mean. And I know there were snipper clips. After that, oh yeah, I got this in, I don't know when, but March, I think, 11. This one I got when I was in California. I just decided to why not. This was for the Wii U. Um, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe released in, yeah, this was a launch, but I this was released in April 20th, but I got it in May something, like in San Francisco. I got this, sorry, and then next up is Mario Sports Superstars for the 3DS, obviously. I got this back in June, but it released in March, I think March 31st, but it was in the end of it, like the last Friday of March, since that's when all, almost all games release, even from Nintendo. It's usually either Tuesday or Friday. Next up is, I, I remember I got them together, but I don't know what first. I decided to go with this one since because it, it already released. Arms. Yeah, it came out June 16th. Same day, same day, sorry, as Cars 3. Got it from Amazon. Oh, yeah. I did not save from where. GameStop. GameStop. Amazon. Amazon. And I think because I opened this one first and then this. I remember they came together. I think it was literally the same day. Then this, I ordered it from Amazon. I was in Saudi Arabia though when it came out and when it arrived in the mail. So... When, of course, when it released, just saying. And then this one from GameStop, it released in June 30, but I got it in August, I think, 16. No, 17. Yeah, 17. Right when I came back from Saudi Arabia a day later. Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. Then this, they announced it back in May, but this was technically a, a year ago game. They announced it, yeah, in May, and it came out in June 20. First of all, the PS4, and then a month later for the PS, um, for the Xbox One, and I think PC. Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered, which has been unfortunately a controversy in terms of like the pricing and blah blah blah. Then I got this one up next. This is the first game that released in the year, January 20th, but I got it in middle of October from Best Buy, because in, you know, Amazon there was no Prime and it wasn't that cheap. Uh, Gravity Rush 2, which has been a sequel to the PS Vita 5 years ago, and then remastered last year in 6 frames per second with the PS4. After that, Super Mario Odyssey, launch day from GameStop. Up next is, from Amazon, like I pre-ordered it also, Call of Duty World War II. Then from GameStop, and it was reserved, Sonic Forces for the PS4. I was debating whether to get this for the Switch or PS4. It was actually Switch, then I changed it to PS4 if you watch that video. And last but not least, oops, I was going to fall, Knack 2. This one actually it was, is a sequel to the launch, which was four years ago. It released in September 5th, but I got it in December, which is this month. So, yeah. Anyways, yeah, that was it then, and now let's start the top 10. Alright, so starting off with number 10 is the least best, Call of Duty World War II. It just seemed like an okay game, but it was good enough. Deserves to be on the top 10 best list, and because since it's at least boots on the ground, but whatever. I was going to do that anyways with every Call of Duty. Then, maybe except Infinite Warfare, but that one I don't want to explain because, you know, I haven't played it. Horizon Zero Dawn. This game was good enough, even the graphics, and I like the idea of it. But it wasn't that... I mean, it was good, but it's not something very exciting. And in fact, I haven't even finished it. I'm stuck at the part where it's kind of like a landmine, and, you know, you follow the guys, like the gangsters, if you know what I mean to that. And that's it. It's like a rocky area. It wasn't snow in it. There wasn't snow, sorry. Then next up is ARMS. It's a good game for multiplayer, but it's not like an endless game. It's funny how there was a joke that it's already dead because of when Splatoon 2 released. Knack 2, this game is very entertaining, but like, even though it doesn't have much things in it, like, it's just an adventure game, you go and attack things and you get gain relics and become bigger, and sometimes you can change it to different modes, like stealth, knack, and all that stuff whatsoever. Stealth has to be when you're small. Next up, Sonic Forces. This game was really entertaining, honestly, I loved it. The graphics and blah blah blah, like everything, even though it was short, so that was disappointing. That's the only thing I would say disappointing about. 
but unfortunately it's been slightly controversial and it's funny because they're Sonic Mania so people obviously would choose that over it since it's based on the old you know formula it's a reimagining Gravity Rush 2 this one's really good and the major thing is in this game as you see in the cover there's a new uh, gravity shifter and um, her animal by the way that makes her be able to do that is like a hawk I don't know a hawk or whatever the bird is it's like you know the those black birds anyways the next up Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy Oh yeah, by the way, so, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, number 5, yeah, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, finally, really loved that game, based on the PS1s, the PS1 ones, I didn't want to confuse it, so that's why, very entertaining and love the graphics, Splatoon 2, very good, this was my most played game in the summer, these two, and Modern Warfare Remastered, even though it's not on the list now, and not going to be. I was really debating this is going to be number one, but still, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, since because it wasn't really a platformer, and sometimes Zelda games take longer, and sometimes you you would become impatient with it. But, yeah. And number one is, obviously, going to be this one. I love the graphics, the frame rate, and it's just very easy to play, and I like the idea. It's a new concept that you use your hat to throw things, like to attack and capture things. That's what it's called, but that's what I really love about it. But it's okay if this is over this, but at least these games are the best of the year. At least that's the point. Point being. Also, speaking of frame rates, also Crash Bandicoot, I was thinking it's 60, but I wasn't... I did not really care if you know what I mean. Alright, then that was it, you guys, for my games that I got this year in my top 10. Uh, what do you guys think? Leave a comment down below listing your top 10, or and if you agree with this list and just what you think about it. Yeah, and then I'm gonna... And make one more video for this month, which is going to be a little stressful. And then that's it. Until then, after that video, I will see you guys next year then. But, bye.